Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theatre. Based on the 1891 novel by James M. Barry, The Little Minister inspired a Broadway play version opening September 27, 1897 at the Empire Theatre, and a 1934 RKO sound film version starring Katharine Hepburn, John Beale, Alan Hale, and Donald Crisp, which was the fifth film adaptation of the work following four silent film versions. The story is set in Throoms, a Scottish weaving village based on Barry's birthplace, and concerns Gavin Dishart, a young impoverished minister with his first congregation who must address a crisis when the weavers he serves riot in protest against reductions in their wages and harsh working conditions. Sir James Matthew Barry was a novelist and playwright best remembered today as the creator of Peter Pan. He was born and educated in Scotland, but moved to London, where he wrote a number of successful novels and plays. There he met the Llewellyn Davies boys, who inspired him to write Peter Pan or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up a fairy play about an ageless boy and an ordinary girl named Wendy who have adventures in the fantasy setting of Neverland. Although he continued to write successfully, Peter Pan overshadowed all his other work, and it is credited with popularizing the name Wendy. The original theatrical version of The Little Minister, starring actress Maud Adams, was a huge success in its day and revived three times on Broadway, featuring stage and film star Ruth Chatterton in The Final Revival Company in 1925. Original star Maud Adams was no stranger to the works of Barry, having appeared in the author's stage productions of A Kiss for Cinderella, Quality Street, The Legend of Leonora, and What Every Woman Knows, in addition to creating the title role of Peter Pan. In addition to her work on stage, Adams revived the role of Babby in The Little Minister on the radio in two 1934 NBC network broadcasts. Also, in 1934, Catherine Hepburn initially rejected the role of Babby in the sound film version, then reconsidered against the advice of her agent, Leland Hayward, when actress Margaret Sullivan was offered the role. The film was budgeted at $650,000. It was RKO's most expensive film of the year, and the most expensive film in which Hepburn had appeared up to that point. Featuring a book by Broadway hitmakers Jerome Lawrence and Robert E. Lee, here is the June 23, 1952 episode of The Railroad Hour, starring Dorothy Warren Schold and Gordon McRae, with Gloria Gordon and Eric Snowden in The Little Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, The Railroad Hour. <laughs> Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the world premiere of a new musical version of The Little Minister by Sir James M. Barry, starring Gordon McRae and his delightful guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another exciting play with music is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Mom and Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, tonight, Lawrence and Lee have joined Sir James M. Barry's famous The Little Minister, with the glorious melodies of Barry's native Scotland. So here's another Railroad Hour first. Dorothy Warrenshold is the tantalizing gypsy girl, Babby, and I shall be Gavin Dishart, The Little Minister. Oh, what lovely one. 
They say in Scotland that a minister should be a tall man. That when he speaks of heaven, the top of his head should be as close to it as possible. In this connection, I was singularly unsuited for the ministry. You're not what I would call a particularly long man, Gavin. But it does not matter. If you stand on your tiptoes in the pulpit and let the thunder roll in your throat, who will notice the long or the short of it, my son? I thank you, Mother. I only hope the people of Thrums will share your views. The village of Thrums was my first call to the pulpit. A tiny speck of a place, but home to a few hundred weavers and farmers. And as the carriage rolled along the cobble street to the minister's mansion, my mother's eyes were wet with joy. Gavin, Gavin, it's all come true. This Sabbath I'll be here in a sermon preached by my own son, God lead him. Hi, mother. Driver, stop here. Uh, Mr. Dishart, I believe... I am Mr. Dishon. May I welcome you, sir, to the village of Thrums. My name is Thomas Warman, one of the elders of the Kirk. This is my mother, Mr. Warman. I bid you welcome, ma'am. We a word of caution, if you please. Caution? Keep your windows barred and your doors bolted at night. But why? There's a band of gypsies in Caddam Wood. <laughs> but I'm not afraid of gypsies. Then there's him that lives on the hill in the castle there, Lord Rintoul. Now, surely, sir, the people of Thrums harbor no hatred in their hearts. Two months ago, there was a riot. And we're expecting soon that Lord Rintoul will call the Redcoats to round up the ringleaders. And the welcome they'll get will make it wise for peace-loving folk to be inside, sir. I forbid it. What? I forbid any members of my kirk to partake in riots or violence while I am minister in Thrums. Let the ringleaders be captured. And why should you, an elder of the Kirk, defend them? Mr. Dishart, I am one of the ringleaders they're coming after. My heart turned sick within me. Thrums was no sleepy, peaceful place. But a powder keg spoiling to be exploded by the British Redcoats and Lord Rintoul. I, I wished myself far away from Thrums. I wished myself back to the Glasgow coast in the Clyde country, where I'd spent my happy childhood. the 17th of October, when the whole of my life turned upside down and inside out. I was coming home from a call on Sanders Webster, the mole catcher. It was bright moonlight as I walked into Cottonwood along the straight road they called the Windy Ghoul. All of a sudden, I saw something that made me stop shock still. I saw a young girl dancing along the Windy Ghoul. Her bare feet flashing in the moonlight and the dark hair streaming out from her head like black water or the rapids of Glen Quarry.
not a late hour for you to be walking the Windy Ghoul alone. It is not a late hour for a gypsy. And I wasn't walking, sir. I was dancing. Dancing is a device of the devil. Now, don't be giving the devil credit for such inventions. It'll do much to increase his popularity. Woman, you are speaking to a minister of the gospel. Oh, what a pity. Such a small one, too. Woman, I... I didn't make, care to make you angry. Forgive me, little minister. I'll forgive you. Where do you live, Gypsy? In a tree. No, nonsense. Where do you sleep at night? I told you. In a tree. Or in the open field sometimes. Oh, you poor child. Last night I slept on a goose feather bed. We are sheet and down so bravely. Oh, and tonight you'll sleep in a cold. Don't waste any of your sympathy on me, little minister. Oh, what care I for a goose and a bed with a sheep turned on so bravely? Oh, what do I My name is Gavin Bishart. I'm the minister of the old Kirk and Crumps. And what do they call you, Gypsy? Oh, my name is Babby. Babby? Has a sweet sound. Well, if I can ever do a service for you, Babby, I, I hope you'll call on me. Now you can do a service for me right now. And you see this horn? Horn? What horn? Here, under my cloak. Let me hear you blow this horn. And why should I do that? Ah, thought as much. You haven't the breath to blow it. You're a wee man. Give me the horn. Oh, I never would have thought you had so much wind in you. Preaching must be good for the lungs. Now give me back the horn. Wait. What's that on your finger? A ring. It is a... A diamond ring. And is there a law in Scotland that a gypsy can wear a diamond ring? My thanks to you, little minister. Wait. Where do I look for you, gypsy, to find you again? I told you. I live in a tree. Don't jest with me, lass. How will I find you if the need should come? Oh, whistle and I'll come to you, my lad. Oh, whistle and I'll come to you, my lad. To him and, I. and tell me, little minister, am I wrong to suppose that the same plan will hold if I choose to call you? Hi, <laughs> lass. You follow the same plan. Oh, whistle and I'll come to ye, my lass. Oh, whistle and I'll come to ye, my lass. You're so blithesome and blithesome, no lass can surpass. Oh, whistle and I'll come to ye, my lass. Minister. Who blew the horn? What? Who blew the horn? Tis the signal that the redcoats are marching to Thrums. The whole village is aroused and gathering on the common. It was a mistake, a trick, Thomas. There are no soldiers on the march. What's that? If it's not the soldiers. Gypsy? How did you know the soldiers were coming? Oh, I know many things. The saints in heaven praise the man who blew the horn. He gave us proper warning to stand up and fight. But I gave the warning. A minister of peace. I sounded the war cry. <laughs> and loudly, too. You're a demon, Gypsy, a creature of the devil. Oh, thank you for the kind words, minister. Kind words? Oh, you couldn't have been so angry with me, Gavin, if you didn't love me a little. Love you? such things, Gypsy. It was on a Sunday morning, right early in the year, when Gavin came to our town with a young minister. Oh, Gavin is my darling, my darling, my darling. Oh, Gavin is my darling, my little minister. Is it now? 
not true, Gavin Dishart. Can you deny it in your heart that you love me a little? I cannot deny it, Gypsy. I cannot deny it. Oh, Bobby is my darling, my darling, my darling. Oh, Bobby is my darling, the young gypsy girl. She tempts me with her devil look, the devil's in her But I am helpless when her smile is turned on to me. Oh, Bobby is my darling. In just a moment, we'll return with Act Two of The Little Minister. You know, wherever you go these days, you'll more than likely hear people talking about high prices. Why, just the other day, I heard a man and his wife talking about that very thing, like this. Paul, I see in the paper that the Office of Price Stabilization has allowed department stores to raise their prices. It's because of increased transportation costs, they say. (laughs) If it isn't one thing, it's another. Yes, I saw the story, too. But I noticed also that the OPS pointed out that, at the most, the increase might amount to only about three-quarters of one percent. And this would be true only on certain items in some stores. In most things, the increase would be even less. Well, you mean that the recent increases in railroad freight rates have had such a little effect on the prices of the things I buy? Yeah, that's right, Helen. Huh. And it's something so few people realize... Because we use so much rail transportation in getting just about everything we need to live and work, we think this transportation cost is a much greater part of the price of products than it really is. The truth of the matter is that railroad freight charges have been and still are a small part of the cost of most products. Well, I never knew that before, Paul. Then if railroad freight charges are such a small part of the prices we pay, any change in them would affect prices hardly at all. Yes, Helen is right. Railroad freight rates are always a small part of the cost of most things you buy. And when you consider how much transportation service you can get at such low cost, I think you'll agree that railroad freight rates are one of the best bargains in America today. Hi, this is Porsche Music Theater's marketing associate, Robo Tate. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and we hope you enjoy the show. Here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee dramatization of The Little Minister, starring Gordon McRae as Gavin and Dorothy Warrenschold as Babby the Gypsy. Disappeared, did Bobby. After that night, she tricked me into blowing the horn to warn the people of Thrums against the Redcoats. A riot there was in the comedy that night, a bloody riot. And I, a minister of the Kirk, was the cause of it. Was ever a man's heart such a battlefield at war with his own good senses? I hated the gypsy for her treachery, but I loved her too. For the sweetness of her smile and the bonny proud way she had a toss in her head in the moonlight. you doing in the minister's garden? Oh, wondering who the lassie might be that you're singing about so bravely. You know her name, Bobby. You know it. 
taste is no different from your own. Till all the seas grind dry, my dear, and rocks melt with the sun, and I will not be still, my dear, while the sands on I shall run. But No, Bobby. You'll stay here in the minister's manse. I'll not have you sleep this night on the cold ground. Oh, please, Gavin, let me go. You're my bride to be, Bobby. No, no. Will you marry me, lass? Will you be my wife? A, a minister cannot take to wife a gypsy girl. Do you love me? Do you love me, lass, with a full heart as I love you? Oh, yes, Gavin. Yes, I love you. Ah. Yes. Then we've got to set a date for the wedding. I cannot marry you, little minister. I cannot marry you ever. Why not? Tomorrow's my wedding day. I shall be the bride of Lord Rintoul. No. How do you think I knew the soldiers were coming? Where did you think I got the diamond ring on my hand? I refuse to believe it. Everything I have, I owe to Lord Rintoul. You're a gypsy girl. I was. When my gypsy mother left me to die... By the edge of a road, t'was Lord Rintoul who found me, took care of me, brought me up. Where do you think I sleep o' nights, Gavin? In a goose feather bed at the castle on the hill. I don't believe it. But the gypsy feeling steals over me all the time, and I cannot stay there. Do you love him, Babby? Do you love this Lord Rintoul? I do not love him, dearest. You know I love you. Well, then you'll not marry Lord Rintoul tomorrow. Well, you'll be the wife of Gavin Dishart tonight. Arm in arm, we left the twisty roads of Thrums for Cadham Wood. And there in the gypsy camp, with the night sky of Scotland for a temple, we were married by the gypsy king. But I had completely forgotten the prayer meeting at McCurk. The townspeople of Thrums sat in the pews waiting and wondering why their little minister didn't come to them. People of Thrums, do you wonder why your minister's forgotten you? What's happened to the little minister? I tell you what, he's run off into the woods with a gypsy lass. No, you lie, Thomas Drummond. It is not true. I've seen him walking shameless down the windy ghoul. I tell ye, Mr. Dishart is nae fit to be our minister. As elder of the Kirk, I say we must run him out of town. <laughs> As the congregation burst out of the kirk, the storm cut loose. The great storm, they still called it in the country roundabout. It seemed the Valley of Thrums was under the lip of a pump that was pouring water down. Not drops, but in a solid stream. The low ground by Cottonwood was flooded in an hour. The windy ghoul was turned into a raging river. I lifted my new bride in my arms as the water swirled angry about my knees. Back to Thrums. Don't be afraid, Bobby, darling. It is the will of God. By a, by a blue flash of lightning, I saw faces on the high ground across the windy ghoul. Mr. Dishart, cross to the high ground while you can. The water's rising fast. It's too late, Thomas. It's just too deep already. Oh, Gavin, Gavin. Do not risk your lives for us, but hear what your minister has to say. If you're angry to find me here with a gypsy lass, I tell you, she is my lawful wife. Before eyes of God and man, and you will honor her as such after we're gone. No, Mr. Richard, no, you'll not die. Pray God and heaven forgive us for what we thought about our little minister. Oh, Gavin, I can't hold on, darling. I'll hold you. I'll hold you, Bobby. A hymn, a hymn of praise to the eternal. 
total glory of the Lord. Dishart, take my hand. I hang on. I we're safe. We're safe, Bobby. The Lord be praised. Mother. I Gavin. This is my wife, Babby. Mother Dishart, come to me, Arn. Lass, come. Oh, Mother Dishart, I'll make him a good wife. Aye, I know ye will, Babby. Gypsy or not, Mother, she'll be the best minister's wife in all of Scotland. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment. And our thanks to Gloria Gordon, who played my mother, to Eric Snowden, who was Lang Tamis, and to our entire company. The Little Minister by Sir James M. Barry was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. You know, Marvin, I was very much interested in that conversation we heard earlier in the program about railroad freight rates and the small effect they have on prices generally. I don't think I ever quite realized what a real bargain we get from railroad transportation. Well, here's another thing I think will interest you, Gordon. Even with the recent increase, today's railroad freight rates are an even smaller part of prices generally than they were before World War II. Right, Marvin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here again is lovely Dorothy Warren Schultz. Well, Dorothy... 
Did you get into dry clothes last after swimming the floodwaters of the Windy Goo? <laughs> well, I've learned my lesson, Gordon. Never come to the railroad hour without your water wings. <laughs> well, we'll be, a, we'll be a couple of Americans in Paris next week, Dorothy. But I promise you we won't have to swim the English Channel. <laughs> well, that's a relief anyway. It's a delightful story about romance in the very shadow of the Eiffel Tower. And it's called Springtime in Paris. Ah, et puis, Monsieur Macré, jusqu'à lundi prochain, bonsoir et bonne chance. <laughs> Crazy, Dorothy. Let's not overdo it. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> All aboard. Well, friends, it looks as though ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and Springtime in Paris, this is Gordon Macré saying... Bonsoir. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. The preceding program was transcribed. Blanche T-Bone stars on the Telephone Hour next on NBC. Today's supporting actors included Gloria Gordon, born Bertha St. Ledger Polliser Wilson on May 7, 1881, in West Derby, Lancaster, England. She was an actress best known for playing the role of Mrs. O'Reilly in radio's My Friend Irma. In the 1949 film version of the program, which was also the film debut of comedy team Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, and she also played the role in the subsequent TV series from 1952 to 1954. Eric Snowden was born on August 12, 1888, in London, England. He was an actor with a wide variety of film credits, including The Prince and the Pauper in 1937, Sherlock Holmes Faces Death in 1943, and The Man Who Knew Too Much in 1956, as well as on TV's Alfred Hitchcock Presents, Adventures of Superman, The Jack Benny Program, and Leave it to Beaver. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Michael Weber